Dr. K. S. Ramakrishnan is working as an assistant professor, School of Education, Tamil Nadu Open University, Chennai 15. He has been teaching science education, environmental science, educational technology and research methodology in various colleges of education and Tamil Nadu Open University for the past 9 years. He has guided so many MED, MPhil and PhD students. His current research areas are environmental education, educational technology and media and communication. He has conducted various workshops on ICT usage in education, wiki educator, e-content development and educational research methodology. He had attended many online workshops on Moodle, learning analytics. He has published six books and many articles in national and international journals of repute. He regularly gives plenary and keynote speeches on environment and ICT related issues at various national and international conferences. He has delivered 28 episodes of the program Pudyodor Ulagam at All India Radio, Chennai related to various new developments in science and technology. Dear viewers, welcome to CEC program. In this episode, we are going to discuss the functions of forest and wildlife, the forest cover in India the impact of deforestation on forest, the wildlife and its conservation, the impact of biodiversity loss and the steps for preserving the forest and wildlife. See now let us see what are the functions of the forest. The forest are in four major ways they are helping the environment. First of all they have the protective function and second they have the productive function and third the regulative function and fourth the accessory function and therefore the forest are helping us in all these possible ways. And now let us see what are the protective function. The protective function means the forest are providing the protection against soil erosion and floods, droughts and noise and radiation and therefore the forest are protecting us from all these natural calamities. So, you see look at the diagram, the soil suppose in case if the forest are not there, the soil will be eroded and naturally they will be reaching the ocean. And you look at this diagram and see there is no forest cover at all and therefore all the soil that is lost and therefore it is resulting in the floods also because the forest that is stopping the water. And if there is no forest coverage what will happen all the water that will be flooding over and therefore it is causing the flood. And in case if the forest coverage is not there then the water may not be retained by the soil and therefore that is resulting in the droughts. And so the forest that is they are protecting us from all these natural calamities. And second the productive that means they are providing various product like honey, bamboo, timber, gum, resins, medicines and pulp and fruits and therefore they are providing us therefore productive function see they are providing the timber and the honey and the pulp and the fruits and therefore it is the second major function of the forest. And the third one is a regulative function, the forest they are regulating the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide in atmosphere and they are helping us in regulating the temperature conditions also and therefore that is the third function that is regulative. See look at the diagram, see the oxygen, so they are fixing the oxygen, the forest they are absorbing the carbon dioxide and they are releasing the oxygen and therefore they are fixing the oxygen in the atmosphere and therefore it is a cycle between the forest and the animal beings because the animal being they take oxygen and release carbon dioxide and the forest they take carbon dioxide and release oxygen and therefore in that way that it is a bilateral function between the plants and animals. And this is the same for carbon dioxide because all the animals and the vehicles and all they are releasing the carbon dioxide and therefore they are taken by the forest and so in that way there is a cycle. And the last one that is accessory function, they are providing the aesthetics 
see look at the diagram so they are having the flora and fauna beautiful flowers and the butterfly and the animals and the very typical animals and therefore in that way they are providing the aesthetics and they are habited to various flora and fauna and they are for recreation as well and so these are all the four major functions of the forest and now let us see what are the forest and tree cover in india as per 2007 the moderately very dense forest that is covering 2.54 percentage the moderately dense forest 9.76 and the open forest 8.75 and therefore the total forest coverage is around 6,92,027 km square area and that is equal to 21.05 percent and the shrubs that is occupying 1.28 percent and the non-forest that is 77.67 percentage and therefore in total that the forest area that is around some 23 percent coverage and this data has been taken in 2007 and the total forest coverage is the same that is given in the diagram wise and therefore see the very high amount of forest that is moderate dense forest that is 9.76 percentage see there is a, a growth in the forest coverage see in 2001 it was around 6,75,000 km square and gradually that it has been increasing and from 2005 to 2009 there is a steep increase and in 2011 that it has reached around 6,90,000 square km and therefore the forest coverage that has been gradually increasing and the reason being there is a awareness among the people and the governments also because the governments have realized that the forest coverage is necessary for the welfare and the sustainability of the human being and the whole environment also and therefore because of that there is a sharp increase in the forest coverage also now there are various types of forest and only two types that we will discuss the first of all that we will talk about the reserve forest and the reserve forest they enjoy the judicial and the constitutional protection and the species are protected in their natural habitat and no human interference is allowed and they are referred to permanent forest and mostly they are prevalent in madhya pradesh jammu and kashmir andhra uttarakhand kerala tamil nadu west bengal and maharashtra and so the reserve forest they are meant for the animals who are which are breeding in their own natural habitat and the second kind that is the protected forest and the protected forest the human intervention not prohibited but the hunting and poaching of animals is against the law that means the human may intervene with the, with, with the forest but the hunting and poaching is not uh, allowed and they are protected from any further depletion and this kind of protected forest are uh, prevalent in bihar haryana punjab himachal pradesh and orissa so these are the two kinds of forest which are dominant in india and now what are the values of the forest see the forest are covering two third of the living species and they are important carbon dioxide sink and 60 million of indigenous people they are also living in forest and therefore these are all the values that the forest are providing to us say the diagram is of uh, some indigenous population in africa and therefore without forest these people can live only in forest because they are very indigenous and they are aborigines also and therefore without forest they cannot survive and therefore the forest are providing the shelter and uh, livelihood for this people and second the animals two third of the living things are in the forest now for what purpose the forests are deforested the major reasons are the over consumption in industrialized countries 
the foreign debt because some countries and they could have got some foreign money uh, as a debt and therefore in bad that is a for exchange of the foreign debt they are depleting their forest and somehow that they are managing their economy and poverty and unequal ownership of land and in mexico 80% of the land is owned by 20% of the people and therefore the rest of the people they don't have any livelihood and therefore the forest that they are depleting and the overpopulation and so these are all the major reasons for the deforestation now let us see what are the environmental impact of the deforestation see the forest is converted into plantations and therefore the ecosystem services that we are getting from the forest and that we are losing and the loss of function to protect the soil and water and they are leading to soil erosion flooding and landslides as we have already seen and the soil fertility and water quality is worsening and therefore there is a severe decline in productivity and therefore because of the deforestation that we are losing a lot okay that they may slightly increase the economy but at the same time a lot of functions natural functions that we are losing and in that the major ones are the soil erosion and water depletion and the loss of species and therefore they are causing a lot of natural calamities as well the flooding landslide and all and therefore these are all the major environmental impact on of the deforestation see look at the diagram see the forest has been converted into agricultural land and here the grazing lands and in this diagram that the oil palm plantations because india is one of the major importers of uh, soya bean oil or palm oil and therefore that is imported from malaysia and some other countries and therefore what they have done they have converted all their lands into the soya bean uh, oil palm plantations and therefore naturally that uh, here a lot of habitat has been lost and so it is leading to environmental degradation and here the oil wells and pipe and therefore all the agricultural land has been converted for the carrying of oil and uh, pipelines and so naturally that uh, they are causing severe problems for the forest uh, ecosystem and so these are all the various problems they are posed by the conversion of forest for some other purposes and see the soil erosion because you see the diagram that is uh, the forest that is almost depleted and so they are leading to soil erosion and now what are the various impact of the climate change on the forest see the climate change that is affecting the growth and productivity because the forest ecosystem they are growth and productivity at particular uh, temperatures only and therefore because of the climate change then the growth and productivity has been affected and directly because of the changes in carbon dioxide temperature and precipitation so the carbon dioxide levels are changed and the temperature and precipitation also has been changed and therefore it is affecting the growth and productivity and indirectly through interactions in forest ecosystems because when the temperature changes are happening and therefore the forest ecosystem and there is a lot of interaction between the animals and plants and therefore that is affecting the forest also and the third one the insect outbreak because a temperature is increased or decreased at a particular uh, forest ecosystem then what will happen the natural animals and they are migrating to some other places and there either they may not be able to survive there or sometimes what will happen they are destroying the plants and animals at that particular ecosystem because that plants and animals may not be able to survive the attack of this pest and uh, insects and therefore the climate change that is very seriously affecting the forest ecosystems and therefore the insect outbreak that is often defoliate and it is weakening and it is killing the trees and in most of the foreign countries 
because of the climate change a lot of forest has been affected actually the it is not the problem of the forest or the pest actually because both are not suitable for each other and therefore ultimately that the trees they have been killed and vice versa sometimes the animal also may be killed let us have a short break Welcome back. See the warm temperatures and the reduction of water causes fires because when the temperature is increased at a particular point then that is causing the forest fire and the disturbances can interact with one another also. And so for example, if the, draw, the temperature increases that is causing the drought and that is causing the fire and that is in return the fire is increasing the carbon dioxide and that is increasing the greenhouse effect and therefore, all these uh, parameters that they are interacting with each other also. And the human development and draft, see look at the diagram, so here the forest fire and it has been mostly caused because of the temperature changes and another point is there as there is less water available, therefore, the forest fire it is very difficult to control. Now, let us see the hydrological effect, see the wa how water or the hydro that the wa water is uh, affecting the forest, see the water cycle is affected and less trees to extract ground water through roots and release into atmosphere because the, the forest they are absorbing the water and they are releasing to the atmosphere and therefore, they are maintaining the temperature of the atmosphere and less transpiration and drier climate and they are reducing the content of water in soil and ground water and atmospheric moisture are also decreasing. And so, in that way that the water that is affecting the forest and vice versa and resulting that the surface runoff increases due to the absence of litter stems and trunks and the dry soil leads to lower water intake for trees to extract and it is reducing the soil cohesion leading to erosion, flooding and landslide. And it is lessening the landscape's capacity to intercept, retain and transpire precipitation. And so, these are all the impact of water on the forest ecosystem. And the next one that is the habitat destruction because when we are the forest are affected then the habitat is also destructed and the habitat destruction is the second most critical factor in space species extinction and there are now 20 percent less forest cover than existed some 300 years ago and therefore, the extensive human demand resulted into habitat loss and the rainforests are the main habitats, the tropical rainforests are cleared for wood and timber, development of petroleum resources, mineral resources for cash crops. And so, by all these ways, the habitat has been destructed. You look at the diagram, see the green color is non-threatened and red color is threatened. And on the y axis, the reasons are mentioned, and here the habitat loss that is corresponding for most of the threatened species. And the next comes the pollution, and there are some unknown reasons also, and the forest fires and the disease, and therefore, this diagram clearly depicts that the habitat loss that is causing the threatening of all the species and here the number of species and therefore, this many number of species have been threatened by the habitat loss. Now, let us discuss about some facts about the wildlife. India is one of the leading suppliers of tigers, rhinos, birds and plants. 
and it is strategically placed between the suppliers and buyers because the suppliers are the western countries and the buyers also and therefore it is strategically placed between the buyer and the supplier and therefore that uh, india is the mo major supplier of the animal product to the world and even though there are wildlife laws they are very stringent but the implementation or enforcement it is not that much strict and therefore the wildlife trade that is rampant in india see in india there are some 80 national parks and 440 sanctuaries are there and there are 23 tiger reserves are established and it has 60 percent of world's wild tiger population 50 percent of Asian elephants, 80 percent of one horned rhinoceros and the entire remaining population of Asiatic lion and therefore, the wildlife that we are uh, having uh, a yeah, very good wildlife as far as the animals are concerned and in case if the wildlife is depleted and that is causing dangers to the human life and impacting the biodiversity the loss of economic value and it is uh, la, uh, leading to the loss of genetic information also. See the poaching and hunting, it is another major cause of animal species extinction and the poaching and illegal trade in animals are around some 2, uh, two billion you know, US dollars to 3 billion dollars and these are all the major animals which are being poached. And so, the poaching, what are the effect of the poaching? See, the unbalanced food chain and the ecosystem, because when in the food chain, you look at the diagram, you see from plants and insect and frog, snake, eagle. So, like that there is a cycle and in that if you are removing one particular animal, then what will happen? The balance in the food chain and the ecosystem that is disturbed and there is a reduction of rare wild animals also see these are all some wild animals which are becoming less and less in number and particularly the lions and tigers and some other birds also and so the national and international wildlife trade that is for these reasons pet trade they are killed for their fur and their meat and their body parts and they are trading for biomedical research also because from animals rare medicines are also extracted and therefore, for all these reasons the animals they are killed and they are poached. And here the diagram shows about the global biodiversity and here the diagram say that is shows that wherever the green and actually it is the diversity that is from 1000 to 1500 and this light red 4000 to 5000 and dark red that is above 5000 and therefore, these are all the areas which are having a very good biodiversity and wherever the pale or yellow color and there the diversity is from 100 to 200 only. And therefore, you can see the major portions of America and Africa and Asia, the biodiversity is in the range of 1000 to 1500 and some parts of Australia and it is more than 5000 and therefore, there is a rich biodiversity at a certain pockets of the world. And the facts about the biodiversity, the earth is losing species at an alarming rate, 3 species per hour are going extinct and 20,000 extinctions occur in each year. That means, in every year some 20,000 species are that is uh, going away from the world that means, they become extinct. And when species of plants and animals go extinct, many other species are also affected as we have seen in the food chain. And the biodiversity of India, the tropical rainforest of Andaman, Western Ghats, Northeast, 
and the coniferous forest of the Himalaya and the dry deciduous forest of central and southern India. These are all having a very good biodiversity and it is home to a number of rare and threatened animal species and 7.6 percent of all mammals, 12.6 percent of avian, 6.2 percent of reptiles and 6 percent of flowering plant species they are home at India and he, the same thing that has been shown here and therefore, here the world and here the Indian species and therefore, percentage wise that we are home to some 11.72 percent of the pieces and around some 13.66 percent of the birds and like that we have a very rich uh, biodiversity. So, when the biodiversity is lost and it is leading to habitat loss and some around 1 lakh plant and animal species have been lost in the last 5 years and the deforestation and forest degradation have increased since the Rio Earth Summit. Now, let us see what shall be done. See, we have to preserve the forest from the poachers and from the natural calamities also and there should be a strategy base in between the economy and environment because it is not possible that suddenly that we can stop all the forest environment because the people they have been accustomed for the product of coming from the forest and all and therefore, the national economy of a country is related to the forest and therefore, there should be a strategy between the economy and the environment and there should be the conservation zones with the buffer zone because the buffer means it is in between the human dwelling places and the forest. There should be the buffer between the forest and the human dwelling places and there should be certain areas which have to be announced with limited sustainable commercial activities. And so, these are all the major activities that we have to do for sustaining the forest ecosystem. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. In this episode, the functions of forest, the forest cover in India, the impact of deforestation, the climate change on forest, the Indian wildlife and its threats, biodiversity and the loss of biodiversity all these topics have been discussed in this particular episode. Now, let us have some questions and the first question mention the major functions of forest. So, what are the major functions that the forest ecosystem is providing? The second question differentiate between the reserve forest from the protected forest and the third how climate change is affecting the forest and the fourth one what are the impact of wildlife depletion on the environment. So, the wildlife depletion is seriously affecting the environment. So, we have to explain how and the last question mention three major causes for animal extinction. So, with that we are concluding this session. Thank you.